Does it seem as though chaos envelops your world? Are you tired, longing for peace? Yahweh provides a way through His Scripture and provides helpful stepping stones on your path. Quiet Strength will introduce a strategy that can help. Wendy Klaus discusses creative ways to put goals into action, encourages stretching exercises to relieve tension, and helps you to apply them to your daily lifestyle. Join me as we uplift one another, learn new tactics, and bring Scripture into this chaotic world to help us find that quiet strength. And hello, everyone. My name is Wendy Larson, and this is Quiet Strength. And I hope you have had a wonderful day. It is about three o'clock my time here. Um, I'm in Arizona in the Bradshaw Mountains, and um, which is the same as the Pacific time. And I believe it would be about six o'clock on the eastern time. Uh, on the eastern side of our nation. All right. And so I just want to say thank you so much for joining in today with Quiet Strength. And I'm going to go back to um, having us do a little stretch uh, theme this today and then um, do some more study in the Book of Ruth because the Book of Ruth is used during uh, Shavuot and during the harvest, uh, because of the harvest time that the story talks about, and because of this being barley harvest and the Omer count. And with that, I just want to say thank you for those of you who are joining in. And um, I would like to welcome you to... Um, Messianic Lamb Video Network, and if you are on the site already and you are new, I'd like to encourage you to scroll on down and see all of the broadcasts that are showing, and we have uh, a few more after my program today, and I hope you can stay on and listen to each one of these. Uh, what a blessing. The Lord is good for providing all of these teachers who are willing and who have said, Lord, send me and I will be your voice. I will be your hands. I will be your feet to share the good news to those who are searching and who are looking and who need the encouragement. Right. And then we have on the banner. We have this banner that is going across and that will give you some updates of what is coming up. Also would like to encourage you to come on over to our war prayer room each morning, uh, Monday through, no, Sunday, Sunday through Friday. We have a war prayer room and we have different um, leaders each day and who lead the prayer time. And if you go to submit prayers and uh, kind of hover over the word submit prayers and see the public prayer list, you can type in um, prayer requests and we will pray for you over that time. And it is at 8.30 Eastern time, which means it's 5.30 my time on uh, each morning, Monday or Sunday. I want to start with Monday. I don't know why. Sunday through Friday. And so please come and join us. Uh, what a blessing it is to have a group of people, especially coming in on the chat room. What a blessing. So um, with that, let's begin today before we do our exercises. We are in the time of counting, the Omer count. And I think today is day 22. I may be off, but I'm hoping I'm right. So I thought maybe we would uh, do the Omer count together before we begin Quiet Strength. And 
The Omer count blessing goes like this. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaAlam Asher Kitshanu B'Mizvotav V'Tzivanu Al Seferet HaOmar Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, with his, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us concerning counting of the Omer. Hayom shenem eserim ve'eserim yom shehem shlosha shuavot vayom chad la'omer la'omer. Sorry about that. Today is two and twenty-two days, um, which are three weeks. And one day of the Omer count. All right. I think I said that all right. Uh, if not, please forgive my uh, incorrect English and Hebrew pronunciation. All right, everyone. Let us begin the stretching because, you know, the stretching really, really helps. And it, what a blessing. Shalom, Rose. Thank you so much for joining. I hope you've joined us, or you may be saying shalom to the <laughs> of the program. All right. If you are joining in and you'd like to say hello, come on into the chat room. We'd love to um, see who's come in and see who's listening. Uh, with that, let's begin our stretching time. Here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and head on back here, moving my chair. All right. And remember, we haven't done our stretching in a while. So just as a reminder, stretching should help you feel more comfortable and it will not cause you to hurt. So if you're hurting, make sure you are seeing your physician to make sure that this is the type of uh, exercises that you can be doing. If you feel a burning or a tingling, uh, a, numbness, a numbness, while you are doing these stretches, you need to stop and wait until the sensation stops. And you may in come back and join in if you choose to resume. Uh, next, do not overstretch. What we are doing is we are stretching the ligaments, we're stretching um, the, the areas that are connecting tissues to our muscles. We don't want to overstretch causing uh, injury. We are using slow movements, which I like. I don't like the... Um, <laughs> I don't like to, to do the jerking a lot, um, but we are using the slow movements. Think of Tai Chi. Tai Chi uses slow movements. Uh, stop if you feel pain. Next, just remember that this information that I am sharing with you is for education purposes only. This is, has nothing to do with uh, giving any medical advice. So if you have any questions, please find someone who has the background, the proper background, and the proper information. I use this to uh, learn from my learning, from my courses, um, and it's for education purposes only. And so with that, we're going to start with a warm up and we're going to try to increase our blood flow while we are doing this warm up and our circulation. And we're going to at the same time relax our muscles around our joints so that we can stretch them more easily. So it's important to stay relaxed as we are doing this, these movements and do not work very hard. Don't you like to exercise and not work very hard? That is a nice feeling, isn't it? All right, here we go with some classical music behind us. And I'm going to put it, hopefully still hear it. 
and still hear me at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just pump our legs. All right. And with this, we're going to draw U's with our arms, and we're going to just kind of go up, relaxing our shoulders and relaxing our arms. We're going to do this eight times. I think that's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now we're going to reach up higher. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So this next part we're going to tap, and then we're going to scrunch, scrunch to just a little bit. No, we don't want to squat. This is just a little scrunch there. And I think it's four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to add our arms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's do one arm at a time. One, two, three, four, the other arm. One, two, three, four, and double arms. We'll do eight of these again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Very good. Now, continue with your tap, scrunch, tap, scrunch, tap, scrunch. Now, let's do some kicks forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now let's just do a tap on a diagonal kick. And when we do this, we don't want to twist. We're just doing a diagonal. I think it's seven and it's eight. Now we're going to do knee lifts. And let's tap. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And with that, let's uh, reach up again and do our taps forward. And this time, we are going to add our arms. And we're going to reach one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's, uh, let's do the diagonals again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's lift our knees. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's do our taps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Up again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Let's go a little lower. One, make sure you stay relaxed. It's hard to stay relaxed, isn't it? Because I feel like we're just kind of moving. All right, here we go. And let's just scrunch. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Awesome. Shake it out. And our next exercise has to do with loosening up the upper body and relieving your back and upper shoulders, as well as increasing mobility in the shoulders, spine, in the ribs. Now when we're reaching, we're going to be pulling through our abdomen and we're working the core, rebalancing and the muscles 
of your torso. All right, here we go. As we begin, we're going to stand with our feet just slightly apart and just a little bit uh, wider uh, than our hips. Our feet are just slightly wider than our hips. This is going to be called the neutral C position. And with this, we're going to bend our knees just slightly. And we're going to tuck in our tailbone. So I'm going to go to the side so you can see. So we're going to tuck in our tailbone. And we're going to um, round the spine and relax the head. And align the shoulder with the hips. We're going to let the hands rest on our thighs. Okay? And we're just going to breathe. And then you feel, you feel the, I'm going to come forward again. So uh, you feel the, um, the, um, the stretching between your shoulders. And then let us gently push the hips back into a spine extension, pulling up through the abs, opening the chest, dropping your shoulders, raising your arms up to the ceiling, doing a ceiling reach. And then we're going to go one, two, three. And then we're going to bring one arm down and lift the other arm. One, two, three. Bringing the other arm down and pulling up through the torso, bringing your shoulders down, relaxing your shoulders. And you're feeling this stretch through your torso. Now bring up both arms. One, two, three. And then we're going to turn our arms out. And then we're going to do a swan. Coming down, pushing. Like push the air down. Just slowly, smooth movements. Now let's tuck in our, our glutes. And we're going to bring our shoulders around our shoulders. Just kind of put your shoulders in that back. Um, just kind of feel like they're in that back um, shoulder blade there. And then lower your hands down your thighs a little bit more. And then feel that stretch in your shoulder blades. And then this time we're going to pull up through our torso. And we want to make sure our feet are not uh, going out or coming in. We don't want to twist. Don't twist. If you feel like your knees are twisting, uh, adjust your feet so that they are with the uh, pads and the heels on the and your pinky pad up on the floor. Okay. And then we're going to pull up and let's bring our hands up. And what we're going to do is we're going to clasp our hands together and pull. We're going to contract and release and relax. And then we're going to push our hands out like we're pushing a, uh, maybe like a lever out there. Two, three. And now think about that air being something that you can slowly like Superman. Just moving that air, parting the air. Now. Lift your hands up like you're bringing, lifting up something slowly with much strength up into the sky, reaching and becoming a swan, opening up the chest, bringing your hands down. And let's do that C, neutral C again. So we're going to tuck in the tailbone. And we're going to bring our shoulders in, relaxing your shoulders at the same time, aligning your shoulders to your thighs, using your hands to slowly go down the thighs in front, giving that lower back a good stretch as well. And then we're going to come back up, pulling up on the torso, bringing our hands up. And we're going to pull like you're uh, doing a pulley. And then we're going to relax. And let's bring our hands out. And bring them up. 
Make sure we're not sinking into our lower back. And then we're going to bring our arms back up. And be a swan. And come on down. You feel that opening of your chest cavity that just opens up your airways and uh, just rest and relax. And we're back into the elongation because we're elongated long um, with our stance. All right. Now with that, let's find a chair without um, arms. So I'm going to bring this over. And we're going to uh, make sure it has a flat surface. And we're going to stand beside the chair with one hand on the top. And we're using our outside leg. We are going to lift out and flex our foot, lower our toes, and come down and go onto our heel. Lift up and lift our toe. Flex. That's two. Come down to the heel. Come back up. Flex. That's three. And one more. Flex our foot. And make sure your toes are uh, also stretching. And when we put our foot down, let's just go ahead and um, lift our heel up and put some, uh, kind of go forward on our toes just a little bit and then come back. That way we're stretching those toes. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a toe, ball, heel, and flex on the floor instead of the air. So we're going to do toe, ball, heel, flex up. Toe, ball, heel, flex. Toe, ball, heel, flex. You know, we were created to move our toes and to have our feet so that um, they're not tight. And so this will help with balance. This will help with walking because we are uh, stretching our toes and giving, get, getting those areas, those ligaments, um, where they are able to move more freely, aren't we? All right, with that, let's go to the other side. I'm going to shake this out. And so we're going to do that again with our outside leg. And so we're going to slowly, uh, we're going to lift our leg out. Flex our foot up, lower our toes, and come down on a heel. Come up, flex, lower our toes, and come down on our heels. Come up, flex, lower our toes, put a little pressure there, and come down, and let's do one more. Flex, and make sure we're not sinking into our lower back. But we are pulling up through our abdomen. We're using pulling up through our ankles, through our calves, through our legs, up through our torso. Okay? And then with that, let's do the toe, ball, heel, flex. Toe, ball, heel, flex. Toe, ball, heel, flex. Toe, Ball, heel, and flex. And you feel your toes beginning to the point where they are being stretched. All right. Now we're going to put our feet parallel together, then slightly apart. We're going to flex our foot, feet. So we're going to put our feet parallel together, and then slightly apart. Flex both feet, then to the ground. So we're going to flex up. Bring them back down to the ground, and then we're going to bend our knees and come up on our toes. Come back down onto our heels, and let's flex our feet up, bring them down, 
Bend your knees and lift. Doesn't that feel good? And then we're going to come back up, go down, bend, and lift. And let's do one more. And bring our feet up, flex our feet. And we're going to bend our knees and come up on our toes. Awesome. All right. And then with that, let's go ahead and make sure we're getting the hamstrings and our thighs. With that, we're going to take our outer leg and we're going to bring it in and place it flat on the chair. We're going to make it make like a, um, a zigzag, bending our outside leg that's on the floor just a little bit. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bend and do a little stretch. It's going to stretch and you're going to feel it all through your hamstring. And then you're going to come back up. And let's lean forward. Now you feel that in your uh, thigh and in your calf. Let's come back up. And we're going to bend our knee and come down just a little bit. Getting that good stretch. Come up and go forward. Two, three, and bend. And go there you go, and you're feeling it. Now, with that, bring our arm up and stretch through your torso. One, two, three, and come up. Let's do the other side, and we should be finished. All right, we're going to put our foot flat and make like a Z here with your other leg. Bending your outside leg over here just a little bit. And when you bend it, this uh, leg up here is just gonna, you're just gonna feel that pull through the hamstring of your leg. And you're gonna feel it in your lower back. Just stretch two, three, come back up and lean forward. One, two, three, come back up. Let's bend our knee a little bit. And one, two, three. If you can go just a little lower, you can. If not, that's all right. One, two, three, forward. And back. One, two, three. Giving yourself a good stretch. Let's bring our arms up. And let's do a side bend. One, two, three, giving yourself a good stretch. One, two, three, coming back up. Awesome. I hope you feel better. I feel, hope you feel like your body has been stretched today and more limber and uh, that you have more of a um, flexibility to your evening. And a lot of times when we do stretches, we do sleep better, don't we? And with that, I hope you sleep better as well. All right, coming back to our um, time here. Let's take a look at what we're going to talk about this week. I hope last week, did you get to make bread? I hope you did. If you uh, watched last week's program, uh, I made uh, a recipe that I had found on the internet. It's called a wheat honey challah bread recipe. I have been making that recipe probably since the fall and get so many uh, compliments regarding the bread. And so I just, that's just now what I make uh, each week to have. We no longer buy bread at the store and um, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And with everything going on in the world, uh, I've decided to order a, um, 
a wheat meal grinder and uh, we're going to try our hand at putting some uh, wheat in the ground to grow and so that I can grind my own flour and um, I'm not sure what you all have decided to do with the prices going up and we know in Revelations it talks about how wheat and barley is going to become very, very expensive. And so this is just something uh, we, Kurt and I decided that we wanted to try and have uh, if it is that time, if it is that season for um, wheat and barley for the prices to go uh, quite a bit high. And talking about wheat and barley, let's go ahead and put this up here. And um, we are going to begin our story with Ruth. Last week I talked a little bit about Ruth. And so this would be a nice Bible study to do. So we're going to do a Bible study in the book of Ruth. And I hope you enjoy. So if you are uh, have your Bibles with you, since this is a Bible study, bring your Bibles on in. And if you have children, bring them on in. This is great for youth and for children. And I think it's very important for our children also and our youth to hear Scripture. Not only hear the stories, but learn how to study. Uh, that was one of the things I was given or somehow bought this devotional book back in the uh, mid 80s. And it was called Search the Scriptures. And what uh, they had daily readings for each chapter. You would start a book. And uh, I can't remember. I, I can't find it today. I think it may be watered down. But back then, they would have you read scripture, and then they would ask you questions. And then in your journal, you're answering the questions. And that's how I felt I learned the most in scripture, uh, learning how to apply scripture to my life during that time. So with that, may I also uh, help you all and so that you can also apply this because during your quiet time this is one way we can use our quiet time with Yahweh isn't it all right so um the story of Ruth takes place at harvest time and Shavuot also occurs at the time of the spring harvest and we find that in Ruth chapter 1 verses verse 22 Last part of 22. They arrived in Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. Thus, we begin with Ruth. All right. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. So let's start out. It came to pass in the days when judges were governing. There was a famine in the land. A man went from the town of Bethlehem in Judah to dwell in the region of Moab with his wife and his two sons. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And his two sons were named Machlon and Chilion. And they were Ephratites from Bethlehem in Judah. They came to the region of Moab and remained there. So let's stop with that, with Ruth 1, 1 through 2. So my first question is, and did I skip? I did. Here we go. What time period did this story most likely take place? Let's go back. What time period do you think? Let's read verse 1 again. Verse 1 says, It came to pass in the days when judges were governing. What book in the Bible makes you think about judges governing? Correct. The book of Judges. Very good. And with that, what was happening? during the time of Judges. 
if you said that people were uh, determining how to live their lives the way they thought, you would be correct. Because in Judges chapter 21, verse 25, we find the uh, verse says, At that time there was no king in Israel. A man simply did whatever he thought he it, whatever he thought was right. So my question is, is that happening today? Yes, it is happening today. We hear so many people saying, don't tell me about scripture. I'm going to do what I think is right. And it's mainly because so many people do not believe that we still follow the instructions, the Torah, which is scripture. And so many years ago, um, when I was grappling with all of this and trying to figure it all out, because uh, being I was in the ministry at the time because of former my former life, I was married to a minister. And there were so many people that would say, and he even believed, you know, the what the Torah was done away with that was nailed to the cross. We no longer have to follow it. And my question would be, then what are we following? What are we following? They couldn't answer me. And I had to grapple with this because I had it coming at me all the time. And I just remember sitting down and saying, Lord, if your instructions are no more, then we're just following our own ideas. We're just following man, the, what man tells us. And that's not right because at the time I pronounce Yeshua as Jesus. And I said, you know, Jesus didn't teach that. He did not teach that. So I had to go back and I had to confirm in my spirit and find, and which I did find, and I did um, adhere to, and I would not move from. The Torah still is our instruction for us to abide by. Just we need to learn. We need to learn and ask the Holy Spirit to guide us as we're learning and studying the Torah and how to how it applies to our life. So that is what was happening uh, back in the book of Ruth. So now we have a little bit of a background. We have a background of the time period of possibly being within the time of Judges, during the book of Judges. So the next question is, do you think the famine was the reason or the judgment due to man simply doing what he thought was right? And that's, again, coming from Judges. So with that, if you would turn to with me to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. So I'm going to find this, Deuteronomy. Chapter 28, and I'm going to read from the uh, the tree of uh, the uh, the uh, tree. Oh, <laughs> I forgot what the TLV means. Tree of Life version. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's read together the tree of. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and we're going to begin with verse 1. Here we go. Now, if you listen obediently to the voice of Adonai your God, taking care to do all his mitzvah that I am commanding you today, Adonai your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. Then all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you if you listen to the voice of Adonai. So if we listen to the voice of Adonai, Adonai, what will happen? Exactly. All these blessings that we're going to read will come upon us. So let's begin. Blessed will you be in the city and blessed will you be in the field. 
Blessed will be the fruit of your womb, the produce of your soul, and the offspring of your livestock, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock. Blessed will be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed will be will you be when you come in, and blessed will you be when you go out. Adonai will cause your enemies who rise up against you to be struck down before you. They will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. Adonai will command the blessing on you in your barns and at every undertaking of your hand. And he will bless you in the land Adonai your God is giving you. Adonai will establish you as a holy people for himself, just as he swore to you. If you keep the mitzvah of Adonai your God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth will see that you are called by the name of Adonai and they will stand in awe of you. Adonai will make you overflow in prosperity in fruit of your in the fruit of your womb, the offspring of your livestock and the produce of your soul on the land Adonai swore to your fathers to give you. Adonai will open for you his good storehouse, the heavens, to give rain for your land and its season and to bless all the work of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. Adonai will make you the head and not the tail, and you will be only above and not below. If you listen to the mitzvah of Adonai, your God, that I am commanding you today, careful to do them. And do not turn aside from any of the words I am commanding you today. After other gods in order to serve them. But if you will not listen to the voice of Adonai, your God, take care to do all his mitzvot and statues that I am commanding you today. All these curses will come on you and overtake you. Cursed will you be in the city and cursed will you be in the field. Cursed will be your basket in your kneading bowl. Cursed will be the fruit of your womb, the produce of your soul, and the increase of your herd and the young of your flock. Cursed will you be when you come in, and cursed will you be when you go out. Adonai will send on you cursing, confusion, and frustration in every undertaking your hand that you will do until you are destroyed and perish quickly because of the evil of your deeds by which you have abandoned me. Adonai will make the plague cling to you until he has put an end to you from the land that you are going in to possess. Adonai will strike you with weakness, fever, inflammation, fiery heat, the sword, blight, and mildew. They will pursue you until you perish. Your sky above your head will be bronze and the earth beneath you iron. Adonai will make the rain of your land powder and dust. It will come down on you from the heavens until you are destroyed. Adonai will bring you defeat before your enemies. You will go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. You will become a horror to all the kingdoms of the earth. Your carcass will be food for every bird of the heavens, and the beast of the earth will no be will. Let me reread that. Your carcass will be food for every bird of the heavens and beast of the earth, and there will be no one to frighten them away. Adonai will strike you with the bulls of Egypt, with hemorrhoids, with scabs, and with itching from which you cannot be healed. Adonai will strike you with madness and blindness and with confusion of heart. You will grope at noon as the blind person gropes in darkness, and you will not prosper in your ways. You will be only oppressed and robbed all the time, and there will be no one to save you. And it goes on. So many people say that doesn't matter anymore. But you know, we're We're seeing some things. So maybe for homework, 
You can take a look at this. Be in prayer. Seek the Lord. And see and answer for yourself. If this is still... Uh, if this still pertains to us today, in my mind, I'm thinking of some verses that, that Yeshua shared with the disciples of things to come. And as we are seeing things happening in our country, think about that. Maybe write them down. Seek the Lord. And if some things are not going right in your life, seek the Lord and ask him. Is it because I am not walking according to your instructions? Show me, O oh Father, what I need to change, what I need to say I'm sorry for, and to ask forgiveness for, and to turn away and walk no more in those ways. Give me strength, O oh Father, so that I can Walk according to your word and not according to my flesh. So maybe you can use this as a time of, of homework for you. And um, that can be something that you and the Lord can have together. So the next question, the next verse, or the same verse, the next part of the verse a man went from the town of Bethlehem in Judea, Judah to dwell in the region of Moab with his wife and two sons. So why did he move? And so with that, we find that there was a famine, meaning there's scarcity of food, which compelled him to immigrate his family to Moab. And most likely because this region what may have been well off with the farming and jobs. And that's the reason why he took his family. And also if we're looking that they are living during that time of the book of judges and every man is doing what he thinks is right. We just read some of the curses that happen that Yahuwah told Israel would happen if they are not walking, if they're walking contrary to his instructions. And since we know in Judges they were, all these things must have been happening in that area. So maybe this is the one of the reasons he thought maybe it might be better. How many of us think it's better? The grass is greener on the other side. You know, I saw a cartoon one time. I should look that up. And that cartoon said, some people think that the grass is greener on the other side, but they don't know that the septic, uh, the, the sewer overflowed to make it green. <laughs> I just died laughing. I'm like, oh, what a thought. What a thought. And so... You know, thinking about that, just because the grass is greener on the other side, we don't know what caused it to be greener. It could have been something bad. Anyways, I hope I made you laugh. <laughs> I hope that love is laughter for you. All right. And then we also see that Israel was under King Eglon of Moab at the time. We find that in Judges chapter 3, verses 12 through 31, and you can look that up as well. So with a little bit of that background, let's talk a little bit more. So we see that the little map there shows where Bethlehem is and how they may have gone over to Moab. And we find that Moab's terrain consisted mostly of gently rolling tableland separated by numerous ravines. And um, let's see. We, it is known for its rich pasture land for sheep and other livestock. We find that in Numbers chapter 32, verse 1, and 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 4. Then we have uh, learned that Moab's soil and climate were ideal for growing wheat, barley, and other grains. And since this was during that time of, 
of harvesting wheat and barley, this most likely would be another reason why the family would move. And then also we find, and you can see the picture there, it's an absolutely amazing picture. It's stretching through the heart of Moab in its eastern part is what is called the King's Highway. And this was a major trade route that led Syria in the north and the Gulf of Aqaba in the south led to Syria in the north and the Gulf of Aqaba in the south. So this was a major, it's like going on the interstate, eh? <laughs> and then thinking about it, yes, they had absolutely seemed like the greener grass on the other side. However, they were under the oppression of King Eglon. And so there was for 18 years. And so there was a lot of oppression. So maybe he thought there wouldn't be. I don't know. But let's look at the relationship that Israel had had with the area of Moab. And here's another map that I hope shows you um, a little better of where Moab is at. So we find in Deuteronomy 2, 26 through 37, and Numbers 21, 21 through 23, to, for Israel to advance into Canaan, Israel had to fight against King Sahan of the Amorites and King Og of Bashan. And then both kings, where were they defeated? In the land of Moab. Then we have another incident where the Balak, Balak, king of Moab at the time, the prophet Balaam attempted to curse the Israelites. Do you remember that story? Right. So where was that? Again, Moab coming and wanting to place cursing against a curse against Israel. However, we know Yahuwah said absolutely not. That's not going to happen. And then we find in Judges 3, 12 through 31, giving the account of 18 years of oppression of Israel under King Eglon of Moab until Yahuwah raised Ehud to deliver the people. With that controversy going on, are they still having issues today? Has this continued Yes, here in 2023, we see from the times of Israel, Israel tries to avoid crisis with Ammon after lawmaker arrested trying to bring 200 guns into the country. So Ammon, who were the Ammonites? They, they're north there, as you can see on the map. They're north of Moab. And Moab and Ammon are both descendants of Lot. Uh, Moab is the older, the son of the older daughter, and Ammon is the son of the younger daughter. And uh, they were um, born, uh, oh, what's it called? I just forgot the word, but the, the, the father and the daughter, they were children of the, the, the grandfather, sadly. All right. Uh, and we also see from the Israel Jordan times of Israel, renewed tensions of Jerusalem's Temple Mount have further strained ties between Israel and Jordan. So this is something to look at. And as you can see, you see Ammon, Moab, and Edom. They're all part. And Edom, those people, the the they're his ancestry is from, I believe, Ishmael, I believe, Ishmael, the oldest son, uh, the twins, uh, Ishmael and um, Isaac's, not Ishmael. Oh, I'll look that up, but I plumb forgot. Isaac's two sons, Jacob and Esau. I believe Edom is from Esau's. I will look that up and confirm that for next week. And so you can see that it tensions are still high in that area. So they really haven't um, 
they had peace, but it's not really been a true peace, has it? Right. So let's look at verse 2. The man's name was Elimelech, his wife's name was Naomi, and his two sons were named Machlon and Chilion. And this is from Ruth 1-2. So what can we glean from this verse? All right. So names have meaning. What does your name mean? My name means wanderer, which when I found that out, I asked my father to change my name. I didn't want it. <laughs> I didn't want it. But as an adult, and I look back over the years, I have literally wandered this, this earth. I do not have a home that called my own. Until now, Kurt tells me to wander no more, <laughs> which makes me feel very, very special. And I'm very thankful. But the Lord also showed to me over the years about how Abraham didn't have a place to call his home his own either. And he did not consider himself uh, this his home, did he? That's in scripture. And so with that, let's we'll begin with what does your name uh, what is the meaning of your name next week? So there's two things I'd like you to uh, look at. Uh, the what we read about the blessings and the cursings and find out what your name means and think about how it uh, has shown what you've done in your life and if it has um, had uh, played a part of who you are, I guess I should say, with that. And we'll discuss a little bit more about this family's and each of their names and what they mean. And uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he give you his shalom. And during this week, may I encourage you again to take time in the morning for prayer and scripture time in the afternoon and time in the evening and build your relationship with our heavenly father yahuwah and may he give you quiet strength through your day shalom alechem everyone and let me see if i can find here we go Shalom of Alekim, everyone. Does it seem as though chaos envelops your world? Are you tired, longing for peace? Yahweh provides a way through His Scripture and provides helpful stepping stones on your path. Quiet Strength will introduce a strategy that can help. Wendy Klaus discusses creative ways to put goals into action, encourages stretching exercises to relieve tension, and helps you to apply them to your daily lifestyle. Join me as we uplift one another, learn new tactics, and bring scripture into this chaotic world to help us find that quiet strength. richly blessed to bring you what we believe is the fullest, most diverse, yet up-to-date progressive teachings, discussion, and prayer programming you can find anywhere on this planet. Be sure to take the tour of the MessianicLambRadio.com website. I'm Susan Hoogie, thanking you for joining us on the Messianic Lamb Video Network.